Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. There has been an amazing and exciting announcement from Toyota today because they have finally introduced the true flagship of the 2022 Toyota Tundra in the form of what they call a capstone. Now we have been talking about the capstone for some time now, so it's not a huge, huge surprise for all of us, but it's great to finally see the capstone in action and to find out all of the details. And even though we are so excited about the new capstone, there is some confusion as to exactly what the differences are between the current flagship, which is a 1794, and the new upcoming flagship, which is a capstone that is slated to come out sometime this spring. So as someone who has been very closely following the story of 2022 Tundra for the past year or so, I want to be the first to point out the exact difference between the 1794 and the capstone because I think in people's mind, they're going to be a bit confused as to exactly what makes Capstone unique and distinct from the already well-equipped 1794. So I'm going to do something that no one else has done so far, which is to point out 15 exact differences between the 1794 and the Capstone so that you are 100% clear on exactly what those differences are and then that way you can figure out on your own which model is the right one for you. So without further ado and in no particular order, let me take you through step by step 15 differences between the Tundra 1794 and the Tundra Capstone. I am particularly excited about the capstone because I have been talking about it for a while. In fact, more than six months ago, I predicted that the new 2022 Toyota Tundra will have a flagship model with lots of chrome and high-end features, much like, let's say, a Lexus truck might look like. In fact, this is the rendering I did uh, about six and a half months ago, predicting the new type of uh, flagship model. And then, of course, this is the actual capstone, as you can tell. I guess my rendering was very close to this exciting new model. Regardless, we are really, really happy that Toyota has brought something to compete with the likes of GMC Denali, because for the longest time, we never had something like this. So while we are really happy to have the capstone, there is some confusion as to exactly what the differences are between the 1794 and the new capstone because they seem to share a lot of features and components and design elements. So to make it crystal clear exactly what the differences are between the new capstone model and the current 1794, I compiled 15 differences between these two models. So let me go through them one by one in no particular order so that you are 100% clear on exactly what makes capstone unique and distinct. So the first unique aspect of the capstone is the fact that it only comes in a hybrid version. Compare that to the 1794 or its closely related model, Platinum, uh, both of those come in hybrid or gasoline only versions, whereas the um, capstone is available only in hybrid in the same fashion as a TRD Pro which is also why the capstone will come a little bit later on, sometime in spring, because all of the hybrid models are coming out around that time. It has the exact same horsepower and torque as the other hybrid versions, which is uh, 437 horsepower and 583 pound-foot of torque. The second difference between the capstone and the 1794 is the fact that capstone only comes with a shorter 5.5 foot bed. Now both the 1794 and the capstone uh, only come in crew max, but at least the 1794 can be ordered with a longer 6.5 foot bed, which is not the case with uh, capstone. The third difference is the fact that Capstone comes with a larger 22-inch wheels and tires. Compare that to 20-inch wheels and tires in the 1794. In fact, Capstone is the only trim model that has 22-inch wheels, and it has a very unique design that's also quite different from other models' wheels. And it appears to have Bridgestone Dueler tires, if I can uh, see them somewhat correctly in the photos, but it's a bit hard to tell exactly what the tire sizes are yet. The fourth difference between the Capstone and the 1794 
is the grill design. In fact, all the Tundras have different grill design based on trim models, but the 1794 and the Capstone have both quite a distinctive design that are quite unique to each other, particularly the fact that the 1794 has a really large chrome opening in the grill, whereas the uh, Capstone has a little bit more subtle uh, design as well as the body color matched and color keyed outer frame, which is unique to the uh, Capstone. In fact, the only other model that seems to have a body color matched uh, outer frame is the TRD Sport. And uh, so that gives a bit of a more of a subtle and high luxury feel that you don't get in other models. Now, some people have pointed out that uh, Capstone have uh, chrome mirrors and also chrome handle for the rear tailgate. But actually, that's the same situation for the 1794. So those are not unique to the Capstone. The fifth difference to highlight is the fact that the Capstone has acoustic glass, which is basically a way to uh, provide more sound deadening and so that uh, interior will be quieter. Now notice that uh, acoustic glass is only in the front, which is okay. That's where a majority of the noise will come in. And the acoustic glass is something you actually find in Lexus models. And right now it's only offered in the Capstone model. The sixth difference between the Capstone and the 1794 is the interior. There are actually a number of differences here, including the fact that the Capstone has a black and a white combination color, which is unique to Capstone and not offered in any other Tundra trim models. The seventh unique aspect of the Capstone is the fact that it uses dark American walnut inlay with open pour. Uh, this kind of open pour design is often uh, used in European cars, not uh, used in trucks, for example. Um, but either way, this uh, particular wood is unique to Capstone and is different than the one that's used in 1794, which is the only other trim models that are using wood trim. The eighth difference is the fact that the Capstone logo actually illuminates when you open the door. So it provides a little bit more of a distinct look and feel. The ninth difference in the capstone is the fact that it comes with an electric automatic running board which works in conjunction with the electric bed step. Both of these are standard on the capstone but optional on the 1794. Now on the new capstone, the adaptive variable suspension and the air suspension are both still optional, just like in 1794. But because the tire size is different and the weight of the capstone will be different from 1794, I also suspect that the capstone will have a slightly recalibrated, a slightly tuned suspension uh, that will be uh, different from the 1794. Maybe not a whole lot, but I actually think that the engineers would have had to uh, recalibrate uh, little bit on the capstone. So that would be the 10th difference. The 11th difference between the capstone and the 1794 is the selection of exterior colors. The 1794 have some unique colors that are not offered in capstone. So for example, the army green and the uh, smoked mesquite, which is kind of like a brown color you see here, are unique to 1794 and not offered at all in the capstone. The capstone still offer a number of different color options just not as many as the 1794 and there are no unique colors that are only offered in the capstone. All right, everyone, we're getting close. We're now on the 12th difference between the capstone and 1794, and that is the interior color. As we mentioned earlier, the capstone has a two-tone color with the white as a dominant color for the interior seating, whereas the 1794 offers two different colors for interior, either the saddle tan or a rich cream color. So you get at least two choices with the 1794, but only one choice in the capstone. The 13th difference between the capstone and the 1794 is the fact that in the 1794 you can actually get TRD off-road package which brings into the truck a lot more capable off-roading equipment uh, but you cannot get that package in the capstone. Okay, we are in a home stretch here. The 14th difference is the fact that the ambient lighting offered in the capstone seems to be a little bit different from the one that's uh, offered in the 1794. With a capstone, you seem to get more uh, lighting, particularly below the uh, dash component here with a capstone uh, lit up, as we mentioned earlier. So there appears to be a little bit more lighting than the 1794 model. 
The last and the final difference is the pricing between the 1794 and the capstone, which is obvious. The capstone should be more expensive. Now, when it comes to the actual cost difference, once the 1794 is added up with all of the features that uh, capstone already have, well, that is a good question to which we don't have an answer yet. I suspect that the capstone will cost somewhere in the north of $70,000 US or perhaps over $80,000 Canadian. And so those are my uh, predictions right now. But either way, it's going to cost more than the $1794. I also suspect there might be slight difference in towing capacity and payload between the 1794 when it becomes available as a hybrid and the uh, capstone. But the difference will be very small. Right now, the capstone is rated for 10,340 pounds for towing and 1485 pounds for payload. But in conclusion, other than these 15 differences, the capstone and 1794 are both more similar than different. And you get uh, all kinds of technology features from both of them, such as head-up display, a 12-inch uh, digital cluster, the new 14-inch infotainment system, and all of the safety features are standard on both uh, models. So uh, you might not uh, notice as much difference as you think, but either way, these are the 15 ones I've noticed, and now you can decide for yourself if it's worth paying extra for the name capstone and also to get some additional differences that you do not get in the 1794. Well, we look forward to driving both in the very near future. I hope this was very helpful for you. I'm signing off for now and we'll catch you soon. Thank you so much.